We're here today at H. Keeper Black, one of Chesterfield County's best kept secrets. Yes, we're at the South Carolina Amateur Bird Dog Field Trials. So stay tuned, we'll be right back with more exciting horse tales. Horse Tales Today is brought to you by Southern Flooring and Interiors. Call them for all of your flooring and decorating needs. And by TMC Construction for your new home or all of your remodeling needs. Call TMC Construction. And by Yogi Bear Fried Chicken, the best fried chicken in the South. And by Chicory Poultry, located in Hartsville, South Carolina. And by the South Carolina Horseman's Council. And by Equestrian Images, making memories together. Well, Blair, we're getting ready to start the first brace here, and it's going to be exciting. Are these marsh tackies going to be able to keep up with those Tennessee walking horses? Well, you know what I say at the end of the show, keep your reins low and your hands tight. Well, you need to keep your reins low, your hands tight, and hang on. <laughs> yeah, I'm a little nervous about it. Let's go. <laughs> now, Blair, we're look, we looking for Bob White quail, not hogs, okay? <laughs> no. Do these marsh tackies know what that is? Oh, yeah. Well, Blair, so far so good. <laughs> yep. I think I seen you eyeing that big old wrong walking horse. And that guy was saying, that's a pleasure to ride. I think he was making light of our tacky horses. But I'm that's okay. <laughs> we're good sports. We try hard, folks, but we're bouncing and jarring. But we're going to find us a Bob White quail. <laughs> Explain to us about what you just did. Well, our dogs are broke the wing and shot, so when they point, we go in and flush the bird and shoot a blank pistol. So we're not killing the birds, we're just going in for the sport of it and to see how the dog looks on his birds. They get points for style and they get points for how steady they are. If they take a step, it's a deduction. If they watch where the bird goes, it's a deduction. They have to stand perfectly still and watch the bird fly away and they have to wait until the handler comes back after the shot to put their hands on them. So how'd your dog do there? Perfect, I mean that was a perfect find. Good, perfect he had score. perfect intensity, everything. Okay, and I heard you kind of singing to the dog. What exactly were you doing there? Well, we just, we sing like that because everybody's voice is different. And the dogs are running so huge and so far out that they have to be able to know where you are. And you can change the tone or the pitch or your voice and the dog knows to either come back in or, you know, change direction, things like that. Okay. And how long have you been competing in the field trials? Well, I started my first puppy when I was 11 years old. And you are 17 now? Yes, ma'am. Senior in high school, about to go off to college, right? And leaving all of them at home. <laughs> <laughs> For your mom and dad to take care of. Yes, ma'am. I'm sure they're excited about that. <laughs> well, they help me now and I couldn't do it without them. So, do you do this every weekend, compete? Um, pretty much. I have a uh, pretty big string. I have six dogs. So, we go and we'll enter some of them in some places, whatever course suits their fancy, usually. So. And then you run just one dog at a time, or how many? Well, we're running braces, and I'm never drawn with myself. So, I run one dog every brace, and I've been back to back. I can be alternating. I can run one on Friday and one on Sunday. It just all depends. Mary, let's saddle back up and go find another bird. Sounds good to me. All right. Get up here. Whoa. 
Good boy. So that dog does a pretty good job. What kind of dog is that? He's an English pointer. Okay. And then Doc, how did y'all train him to do what he does? Experience. Lots of riding. <laughs> he has to go a lot. I mean, working for a professional trainer is hard work. They ride him every day, all day. Okay. And um, he learns, they learn these skills by, uh, they hobble them. They do a lot of things to teach them how to stand. And a lot of horses can't do it because of their herd boundness or whatever. Mm -hmm. Well, um, how many trials do you usually do a year? Usually about a dozen. That's a, that's a good bit. <laughs> oh yeah, we'll be going about every weekend from, um, we start in November and go through about March. Okay, well thank you so much for showing us how this goes. Well, you're very welcome. Thank you for coming. Stay tuned for more horse tales. We're staying out the ditch. <laughs> <laughs> Calendar of Events is brought to you by South Carolina Horsemen's Council. For more upcoming events, be sure to visit us online at horsetailstv.com. Hi, my name is Dr. Brittany Factor and I'm here at Palmetto Equine Clinic in Camden, South Carolina. I'm here today with Laura, our technician, and Goose, our horse, and I'm going to talk to you just a little bit about the equine athlete. And I feel like horses, if you want to use them for your particular discipline, whether it be dressage, hunter jumpers, eventing, western performance, etc., you know, I really think that they should be treated like an athlete, just like a pro football player. And this starts from your pre-purchase state. You should choose a horse that's suitable for you and your discipline. Have a veterinary evaluation. Um, a veterinary evaluation at pre-purchase time includes a very thorough physical exam, us feeling the entire horse, going down the legs, palpating for any abnormalities, um, and treating the horse just like it was having a lameness workup, essentially. Uh, we'll apply hoof testers, we'll watch the horse move on a straight line and circling both directions. We'll perform flexion tests, which I've talked about before in another vet tip. Um, and then 
We may even do a neurological examination, blood work to evaluate internal organ function, look at their teeth and their eyes, pretty much every system and make sure that the horse is suitable for you. Now, just because a horse may have a very tiny abnormality in one eye, or he has a history of some mild arthritis in, in the hock joint, uh, if this is something that's manageable, again, if you treat them like an athlete and you know that you're getting into something that you have to manage throughout your horse's career, that's okay. And you just need to speak with your veterinarian about those things that you need to do. Because you need to make a decision that's both good for you emotionally and and one that's good economically as well. Things that you can make sure that you're doing correctly for your equine athlete at home is make sure that you have proper shoeing performed by your farrier. And this means that depending on your horse's shoeing cycle and how fast he grows a foot, that you have shoes put on and a proper trim done on a regular basis. That might be every four weeks, that might be every six weeks. And make sure that your horse's angles are correct so that when he's working on surfaces, everything is concussing at the same time in the right angle and that there aren't any abnormal forces on your horse's limb. Um, one thing that I notice about a lot of horses that that we have to correct in the clinic is that their inside to outside hoof balance is incorrect. And actually sometimes the outside of the horse's hoof can look def definitely different than the inside of your horse's foot where the bones lie. Um, so we take x-rays to make sure that the hoof is balanced. And what we can do is take x-rays before your farrier works on the horse and then again afterwards to make sure that we've corrected them. I hope you've learned something from today's vet tip of the day. And if you have any questions at all, feel free to give us a call at Palmetto Equine Clinic. The number is 803-432-9525. And we're willing to give you an estimate over the phone of what it may cost to have your horse evaluated for certain things that you may be concerned about. Joining me now is George Kimbrell, president of the San Laffer Field Trial Club. Tell me a little bit about the San Laffer Club. Well, uh there's, there's probably 12 clubs in South Carolina, and San Lapper runs two trials. Every year we have a fall trial and a spring trial. And the, the first one, the fall trial, is an hour stake for the amateur handlers, and the second trial is just a 30-minute stake. Now we're here field trial, and what exactly are we doing here? Well, uh, we, we, braced, we have a uh, field trial drawing where every handler calls in his dogs and enters them in the trial and we draw them out and that's pairing them up. Uh, we try to run six braces a day which is 12 dogs. Two braces per dog. We got two judges looking at, at the dogs and judging the dogs on how many birds they find, how many points they have, uh, how they run, how they listen to their handler, uh, their style on point uh, and they, they pick the best three dogs of the state that they like. Okay, and when you say braces, what does that mean? It's a brace of dogs, a pair okay. of dogs. All right. And they run for an hour in this, this trial, just for an hour. Okay. And uh, they, they judge them, you know, how they listen, how they run, just different things. And, and y'all do that off horseback. That's why we're off, here today. Do it off a horseback. All right. And when, when the dogs point, the handler gets off his horse and flushes the birds to get them to fly, and we shoot a blank gun just, just to reward the dog. Right. Thank you so much for joining us, and tell mm -hmm. us how people can get in touch with you. Uh, my phone number is 803-242-1772. And also, um, if you'd like to have any more information about the field trials, you can go to Facebook and check out the field trial Facebook page. Joining me now is Bruce Chavis, one of the uh, park rangers here at H. Cooper Black Jr. Well, Bruce, tell me a little bit about H. Cooper Black Jr. Well, we are a multi-use facility. We got uh, 7,000 acres, uh, over 20 miles of horse trail. Um, we cater to a variety of people. Anyone wants to come in and day ride, it's free to ride. Uh, if you want to camp, we have camp sites, and uh, they're $20 or $0.28 cent a night to camp. That's water and electricity. We also have a uh, dump station. We got bathhouses. Um, anything you want to do basically with uh, outdoors, with horses and fishing, uh, H. Cooper Black is the place you might want to come visit. It's, uh, we got a lot of scenery as far as uh, wildlife. Uh, today we got the uh, shooting dog championship, uh, sound leopard championship going on right now. So uh, 
next weekend we'll have a retriever event. In the past, we've had uh, several other retriever events. We also have uh, the military comes out and they do bomb dog training. And uh, they, they run out here four and five days a week, train the bomb dogs to go do either uh, the United States Marine Corps or the British Marines comes in and they buy dogs, purchase it from a local uh, guy that trains the dogs. And uh, so, uh, well, I've told everybody that H. Cooper Blade Jr. here in Chesterfield County is one of the best kept equine secrets uh, in the southeast. I know y'all had uh, here a while back a really the uh, endurance ride that was uh, yes, sir. Uh, one of the top endurance runs in the nation. In the is nation. that correct? Yes, sir. Uh, that, that was put on by uh, Patsy McGowan, mm -hmm. and uh, they come in and they run the, the October race. Uh, it's called the uh, Sand Hill Stampede, and uh, we also have a spring and uh, it's called the Spring Fling, and it's an endurance ride. And they run a 30 and a 50 mile uh, trail throughout uh, the Sand Hill State Forest and eight scoop of black. And uh, the one that's in October, they run a uh, 50, 75, and 100 miles. And uh, you know, it, those horses, they bring Arabians mostly, but you can bring uh, a Mars a, 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 <laughs> a mule, or whatever. We've had a little bit of any and everything to uh, compete in it. You know, the 30 miler is uh, more or less for anybody that wants to do it, but the 50, 75, and 100 miler, that's for the people that's real deal. real deal people, you know. And we get people from all over the United States that come participate in it and with our uh, hunt club test the bird dog retriever events and all they come from Canada New England uh, we've had them from South America uh, Brazil anywhere you can just about think they come to H. Cooper Black to compete in our events that we host we have uh, 39 scheduled events this year and uh, like I said people come from all over but it's a hidden jewel in the sand hills of uh, Chesterfield County and uh, we would like to get it out into the open where more people would come and visit us at H. Cooper Black. Well, I promise you, H. Cooper Black Jr. is is on the map and becoming more and more on the map. But like what they say here in South Carolina, smiling faces and beautiful, beautiful places. places. There's so much to do here at H. Cooper Black. There's places for your dogs, stables for your horses, places to camp. We've stumbled across some new friends. Rick, where are you from? We're from Monroe, North Carolina. So what are you doing here? We came down for the weekend to ride our Tennessee walking horses out here in this beautiful place right here at H. Cooper Black because the facility is so good for the horses and it's just a great place to be. It is. It's beautiful. Do y'all come here a lot? We try to come down about three times a year and plan a big trip in the spring of the year and then in kind of the fall of the year like this, about six couples come. So I see you have a banjo there. You want to play us a tune? Yeah, sure can. <laughs> Horse Tales Today is brought to you by Southern Flooring and Interiors. Call them for all of your flooring and decorating needs. And by TMC Construction for your new home or all of your remodeling needs. Call TMC Construction. And by Yogi Bear Fried Chicken, the best fried chicken in the South. And by Chicory Poultry, located in Hartsville, South Carolina. And by the South Carolina Horseman's Council. And by Equestrian Images, making memories together. I'm having a great time here at the Field Trials. Stay tuned, up next is your Tack Tip of the Week. Hello, I'm Adrian Potter with the Tack Room in Camden. Today we've got some Tack Tips for you. First, we're gonna discuss buying Tack. When you walk into your local Tack Shop, you will be faced with many, many choices. There's gonna be a huge range of leather qualities and price ranges that you're gonna encounter. When you're looking for Tack, you wanna consider your budget. And you always want to try and purchase your tack to the highest ability of your budget. The higher price and higher quality tack that you can afford is going to last you much, much longer. Um, it's an investment, so you want to purchase what you can put your money into, and you'll get years out of it. With the right care and right products, uh, bridles, saddles, tack can last you 15, 20 years with the right care and the right purchase. There's lots of choices, sizes, colors, options. Uh, anybody at your local shop or over the phone can help you. All horses come in different sizes, colors, options, so we've got lots of different things to choose from. Um, when you come in there and you've got your price range, you're considering the tanning process, the quality of leather, where it's constructed. So if you have any questions, 
please give us a call. Come by and see us. We're at 2530 Broad Street in Camden. You can find us online at tacroomonline.com or call us at 803-432-2264. I sure have had a great time out here at H. Cooper Black for the field trials. Now I know why these people ride gated horses because I was not on one and I'm going to be sore tomorrow. Well, I got a little chilly today, Blair. I have to admit I had my long johns on and my hot pockets in my pocket. <laughs> anyway, special thank to uh, Bruce Chavis. Very professional, but that's what I've learned to expect about H. Cooper Flag Jr. The personnel is so professional. The facility is always immaculate. Just, uh, I can't say enough things. Folks, you're really missing out if you don't come here and enjoy H. Cooper Black Jr. And I want to thank everyone that helped us out with the field trial and also a special thanks to my new friends from North Carolina for playing me a special tune. So next week, keep your reins low and your hands quiet. Don't forget to check us out on Facebook. Please like our page and also visit our website, horsetailstv.com. We'd love to hear about your horse tail. Folks, I want to take this uh, minute to dedicate this show <clears throat> to my good friend, Glenn Allen, that would have loved to have been here. Uh, today, he is, his memories is riding around here. Glenn was a good friend of mine in high school, quarterback ahead of me. I just can't say enough good things about him. But his passion was uh, bird dogs, and I've talked to his family, told him I wanted to dedicate this show to him. And I want to say a little uh, quick spoof about Glenn. He was quite a horseman, quite a man. But uh, we was not at this facility, but another facility, and I was just learning about uh, field trial and stuff. And I looked across uh, the uh, field, and come up. Uh, big man on a big horse, which was a McGurdy plantation horse, and, and Glenn Allen was a big man more ways than one. And uh, about halfway across that field, Blair, all I could see was mud and stuff, and about a 250-pound man and about 1,100-pound horse turned a complete somersault. Mm. And everybody said, somebody's dead. And no more they had to quit rolling that Glenn was back up on that old McGurdy horse and uh, coming back, back to us. And like I say, that was one of the last memories I've had of Glenn. But uh, like I say, Glenn Allen was a great man and a great friend. I want to ded dedicate this show to him. He would have loved to have been here. And uh, just appreciate everybody letting me take time to say that. See you all next week.